what is up what is up y'all i'm back i feel like it's been forever since i got in and did a review um you know we had a little break from the potomac ladies um around the holidays time so you know the your girl got lazy you know because i didn't have any content or anything to talk about nevertheless i'm back with my review real house uh, real housewives of potomac season seven episode 13 yeah, when I last left off of my last review, it was just this episode before the whole Deborah confrontation. You know, I was really prepared to come back and go in and let half of Miss Deborah, but y'all, I don't believe in bullying and I wasn't I didn't feel bad for Miss Deborah, but I don't condone bullying, but yeah. I didn't want to circle back and just make a comment and just say people really do the most like come on a reality tv show and be wanting fame so bad because that lady done had hashtag rhop in her ig bio and i just know for a fact she was not expecting that type of response from the fans and the people on the twitter and social media streets Whew, i know that had to be humbling but y'all don't go seeking no fame and celebrity and stuff that bad and actually a fake friend, y'all. I just had to get out and discuss that since I didn't make a review for last week. But yeah, that's embarrassing. Anyways, so this episode, I really feel like it was pretty boring and gave pretty much filler. And it was a lot of commercials. And I feel like they threw a lot of commercials in because we didn't have enough content and stuff to talk about. They didn't give us enough content or material, you know, to be entertained with. So that's why... We had a lot of commercial breaks. But um, last episode, we did see Karen have her variety show. Am I only, the only person who wasn't confused about what her comedy thing was going to be about? I think it's only because, you know, before the season aired, we saw little clips where people from um, Karen's show was recording on their cell phones. And they recorded me getting up, asking that question to Karen. So from that and like how Karen was seated on the stage... I got the impression in um, them discussing it, I, I immediately picked up that it was going to be a variety show. Like, that's what it was given, just from the discussion. So, I feel like everybody else was in much confusion about it, but not me, apparently. Hmm. <laughs> I feel like Giselle really getting the feel that the jig is up. She done went through each and every, each and every one of these ladies attacking their husbands, their marriages, and... Candace, I feel like her breaking that little fourth wall break and um, exposing Giselle's antics and calling it out for what it is and seeing how this whole plot on Chris really fell flat and what it's giving, what it's looking like. And maybe producers gave her that hint in that she, so she knew, she knows like she can't attack a crumb from nobody else's husband no more. Like that, she don't beat that to a dead horse and then there's nobody else to come at. Who, who else? Mia? She exposed all their tea about her and Gordon. So, yeah, we need something new. So, we get this talk about um her on the phone with, look, she's so boring, I forget her name. On the phone with Robin talking about um her fibroids issue and how she may have to have um, a hysterectomy to truly heal it or whatever. I'm just not understanding why Giselle doesn't talk about these type of things and why she's so committed to being miserable and coming and attacking people's families like you so committed to making a good show and thinking thinking of yourself as this ghost producer but you don't want to add anything of your personal story a lot of women especially black women battle with frat boys and like things like that why would you not want to talk about that so we get a little bit of her discussing that and like the pain and stuff going through that then like i don't know she just has to like switch it to go back to being her messy self talking about karen's variety show and how it was um boring it was confusing we didn't know what was going on and was less about karen and more less and little about karen and more about all these outside people so it's like giselle giselle just confused me i don't really care for her on the show i don't really like her but I do know that her and Karen are like the faces of this franchise, like the most 
popular you know they are the two queens of potomac okay even though i feel like other people i feel like candace is really more the most entertaining but yeah i just don't understand why she just refuses to get into her personal details but anyways we have that um the two born bandits and that was that so next we have karen you know she's packing and she's talking with ray about how um ashley has asked her to co-host this trip for her birthday trip and they're going to mexico um karen states that they're also going to let wendy come with them fly out with them ahead of time because more women have an issue with Wendy than don't. And I feel like that's just so stupid. Like this is just making zero sense to me. Uh, <laughs> Wendy didn't do nothing to these ladies. All these women have attacked her and she's a victim in a situation, but she's been made and pointed out to be the aggressor or like the one in the wrong. And it's just really confusing to me. And then like she, Wendy ain't been getting no type of confessionals. She ain't been featured in none of the scenes. Like, it's so clear they're trying to ice her out and push her off the show. And they even, it's clear that they really expect their, um, the fans and people to be against her. Be rooting for Mia with the whole assault and attack that Mia did on her. Like, it's weird. Super duper weird. And I just don't appreciate because I just really don't like that. Giselle has way too much power and control behind the scenes with production and on this cast. Like, is it Giselle's show? I feel like if it's going to be a show, you got to bring something. So, yeah, I don't really like how they're doing Dr. Wendy. So, <clears throat> I really don't like how they're doing Dr. Wendy. And again, I say I feel like I say this every video, but it simply just boils down to her reading Giselle for Phil so bad and Giselle being a colorist and trying to push this lady off her show and, and plus Dr. Wendy is fine okay I was looking at her in that scene where her Robin her Karen and Ashley are in the car headed to the little hotel Wendy looked gorgeous okay skin melanin popping it's beautiful 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 <sighs> and she has a husband handsome husband that loves her and beautiful kids and Giselle hates on that okay because she feels like she's Cause she feels like she's the one that should be deserving of that because she is the light skin with green eyes and all that but obviously hasn't got her much in life not happiness not joy not peace anyways let me move on now we move on to robin and this fake overdone stale marriage storyline i moved on from the prenup now we're trying to act like we're getting taylor and then there's actually going to be a wedding and it's a crazy and it's so crazy because even her sons know that this whole thing is some BS. But they just going along with it for the cameras. You know, kids, they just, they okay with being on TV. And Juan Dixon, okay, the roommate, is just okay with the check that this provided. So he's going along with it too. But I, but I, will, what I will give Robin is that she looked very cute. Okay, she looked nice in that blue, that little royal blue she had on. So, yeah. So, you know, I won't give all shade, but, um, apparently they came to some type of agreement with the prenup and they're discussing the wedding and she's saying, um, she believes that hopefully they can have it done and get married, remarried by July. But, you know, we know that that done came and went and they still ain't got remarried, so... And Andy already let us know when she was on Watch What Happens Live that we ain't getting no wedding this season. So, like, what's the point? Robin does not need to give have no full-time housewife role next season. Like, she really needs to be demoted to friend of. But I feel like it's just her connection to Giselle and the pull that Giselle has over there with the producers and at Bravo and with Andy as a whole. Kissing her butt. It's going to be a hard fight for her to go anywhere. And that's probably why she's stick to Giselle but so hard Giselle's the reason that she keeps Giselle's the reason she has food on her table right now and it's you know I'm not mad because she went you know when they made this statement about the Dubai girls and she tried and she tried to say freaking Chanel Ayan was faking her personality and trying too hard from Robin you don't try enough and I love me some um Ayan okay Chanel Ayan you need to get some pointers from her because the personality is on 
yeah, anyways. Robin is still dead set on saying she only wants the wedding to be her one and the boys. And the boys are like, okay, well, what about grandma and grandpa and blah, blah, blah. They have the man to come and tell them for fits that the tuxedos and suits that they'll never wear. Who cares? Moving on. I am just in, like y'all, in much confusion over this whole Mia and Jacqueline thing. And I watched Jacqueline's sisters on here. Her um, sister, the one that's Mia's nanny, if y'all don't know. She has a YouTube, uh, it's called Tita Talks, I think. But her lives and her videos be like two hours. So y'all, I can only handle so much. And I even put it on like 1.25 speed, to just like get through it. But she talking in circles and repeat everything. She's an older lady, y'all, but yeah. But in her most recent video, she did say, state that Jacqueline called her when all this was going on and let her know, I guess, right when they landed, when she got to her hotel, that um, the sister said that Jacqueline called her and told her that her and Mia got into it on the plane. And yeah. So, but I was seeing, if it wasn't for Mia re releasing that whole um, DV video of Jacqueline and her ex-husband, before the season started, I would feel like this, all this was just so staged. The conversation is supposedly about um, Jacqueline, Jacqueline not knowing where her kids were, and she felt like Mia should have been responsible or something like that. But I feel like there was just so much underlying tension and stuff, you know, because you know they're they are like family, so it's really been like a built up aggression or resentment and drama and that's where all this is stemming from and i feel like the same way um if you guys watch love and mirror transfer like the issue with kiki and tisha i feel like that's the same thing that's at play here with mia and jacqueline it's like i'm just not understanding the beef of the argument okay but you guys remember in miami when jacqueline was saying that uh if she would have met mia while they were adults she wouldn't be friends with perry and they have a really weird friendship relationship thing going on sorry i had to come change my location but back to what i was saying okay so we get all the girls um have arrived in mexico of course karen ashley and wendy are already there and they have um prepared little giddy bags for all the ladies um for whatever reason ashley has put um little self-pleasure toys in, in the bag for all the women and then there's certain little gag type gifts for um in their backs as well. I'm guessing we know that um, Giselle specifically wanted a flashlight, you know, trying to throw a little shade and dig at Mia and Jack in their situation because, as she states, um, she wants a flashlight so she can get her a car too. They don't ever check that lady. Like, you see how Mia be having all that smoke for freaking Wendy and Candace. But never check Giselle. Mm, yeah, okay, we got that. But anyways, um, they also give Robin a little cute bell that says bride to be. Oh my gosh, Karen killed me in the confessionals with this episode. Um, Y'all, our, our auntie Karen gonna say, even the veil knew to get the F out of the room because it ain't finna be no way. And uh, Juan got a fake ring and everything fake. I don't know what it is, this whole beef. The beef between um, Karen and Robin reminds me a lot of the beef between Nene and Candy, where I feel like it's like really one-sided. And this isn't, I feel like it's Robin who's more mad at Karen. And if y'all if you watched, a, um, seen the clips released from Watch What Happens Live, where Ashley was just on it, she's saying that, she said there's a lot going on behind the scenes between Karen and Robin. And I believe that, because I don't know what it is between them two, but... They just don't see it for each other. But yeah. Um, that's what that gave. The little gift bags. But um, before we could even convene and have a good time. I was saying like this episode was so boring. And I was. I'm really just going to remain hopeful that these ladies can have some fun. And like good time. Good vibes. Really GVO okay on this trip. Because Miami was a bust. And a freaking trip from hell. But before we can even get into everything, you know, we have this whole back and forth argument blow up between Mia and Jacqueline. What I don't like, Wendy and Candace are just not petty enough for my liking, my blood, okay? Do y'all see how they was over there trying to freaking comfort Jacqueline after she was just, um, and see no type of comfort and, um, 
coddling for Wendy when she was attacked by um, Jacqueline's supposed best friend who she was just constantly having her back up for or whatever. Um, we didn't see her reaching out and trying to see if Wendy, if you were okay. But here you are hugging her, you know, checking in on her. Freaking Candace is over here. Um, Jacqueline was just cussing her out and jumping in on her for no reason. But yeah, we see her um, over here comforting her and trying to get Mia to go and checking in on her. So anyways, um, the girls meet up where they pre prepare these whole decorations in celebration for Ashley's birthday. And um, Mia goes in and starts saying um, she doesn't want, want to sit next to Jacqueline because she's the devil. And if y'all see... Um, when Mia said that, Wendy was like, oh, oh who are we talking about? Because she want to make sure it's not her because, you know, she already done been through much, through so much. I feel like she just tired. She done got these kidney stones removed. She just want to rest, okay? The girl's been icing her out. And she probably feeling like, it's feeling like they finna get ready to fire Wendy. And I hate that. I hate that. Because it's all because of freaking neck. That gives her neck. But anyways. Um... She makes it clear that she was talking to Jacqueline. And I was just living for me. I mean, I was just living for Wendy and freaking Candace's reactions during this scene. And Ashley, too, later on in that dinner scene where Karen and Sharice going to go at it. But um, Jacqueline was saying, I think uh, Mia just bothered because she needs some peen. <sighs> and here's what I don't like. Like Mia it just really truly is just so thirsty to be this reality TV star and girl that she's really willing to sell out her friendship like this real relationship this um her and Jacqueline you know they've been friends since they were like 16 and she's willing to throw that all away for a storyline and to appear as that boss in front of these girls because you can tell how she went and did all that oh you're feeling yourself a little too much okay it really basically gave like this is my arena i was on this show first even though she only been on for one season you know and i feel like she feels some type of way because um a lot of people are seeing thinking that um because we were introduced to this show or introduced to jacqueline through mia from being best friends but jacqueline um i seen where she did an interview with um a channel here on YouTube, like a smaller channel too, and she was saying that she was actually brought on and suggested for the show from another castmate, and I believe that castmate is Robin. Suggested, like, um, I feel like you'll be a good fit, and she, stay, she stated that it wasn't Mia who brought her on and suggested that she be a friend of. So I feel like taking that into consideration and, like, their upbringing and how, um, Jacqueline's family did a lot for Mia, you know, because she didn't really have that support around her. Mia really felt like this show and this opportunity was her thing. And here comes Jacqueline trying to be a part of it. So, you know, I feel like there was resentment there and stuff going on. Like, I feel like there's a lot of deep-seated, um, deep-rooted issues. Which is why um, Mia had to go so deep and personal in the juggler and... She went and quoted something from the book of iconic reads from the one and only Lanethia Leakes. I'm going to say, close your legs to marry men. That's so weak and it felt so flat because like, girl, we done heard, the whole world done heard this and we know where it came from. Like, girl, I would have preferred you to just say, stop sleeping with other people's husbands. Because, like, the quote, Nene, like, you're not nowhere near that level. I would never be that. So, it was, like, pretty lame to me. And it was also so personal. Not to mention, Mia, you done already told us this season that when you met G and when y'all first got together and got intimate, he was still married. So, apparently, y'all got that in common, sleeping with people's husbands. Because you was a mistress, too, so... But once um, Mia says that, Jacqueline gets so visibly upset, you know, she's crying, saying you done sold your soul to the devil. And was it just me, but when she said that, I immediately thought she was talking about Giselle. Could have been Giselle, or it could have just been for fame in this TV show, but I'm going to say Giselle. <laughs> 
so she says you know i will never sleep with you i would never sleep with your husband blah 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 no she didn't say anybody's husband she said your husband and um sharice born sharice is gonna say um she never said that and and Jacqueline was like, we was best friends. I was your best friend. I would have never did this to you, blah, blah, blah. Giselle was so hilarious to me because she always making her little side remarks. And she was like, y'all still best friends. I I'm confused. Where's the disconnect? That was so funny to me. But anyways, notice how Robin was the one that who I believe, and I'm just going to assume, brought Jacqueline into this fold and this show. And, you know, um, Giselle didn't have me a follow up with the whole fight with Wendy. But notice how them two were, uh, Mia and Jacqueline is arguing and going back and forth. They're just sitting back and watching it all go down. But Wendy and Candace are the ones to be playing mediators. And even um, Karen, you know, Wendy, man, Mia is her friend. And I believe she's cool with Jacqueline. Because in that same interview where I was talking about Jacqueline did, she was saying who's the, the person, asked her who's the person she's closest with on the cast. And she said Karen. But um, Karen didn't inter intervene or try to mediate in that. And neither did Ashley. I feel like they know that th that was the opportunity to be having a good scene and I feel like Candace was most of her wanting peace on the trip you know because she was saying in her little graduation party like that the group feels disjuntal so she just wanted this trip to go good you know and just be a fun time for everybody but clearly we don't get that and I feel like that too I would like to see that fight play out a little bit longer too because you know she tries to get um, Mia to tell her to take her friend outside, you know, and calm her down. But Mia clearly, clearly doesn't want to because she just wants to be one of the Green Eye Bandits. And she felt like this would be a great storyline and probably was feeling like she was doing the girl a favor because um, she felt like this would make for great TV and can get Jacqueline secure a season two, a season two. But um, yeah, that was a mess. I didn't like it. And I feel like it was a lot of personal stuff going on, like, behind the scenes. Like, a lot of built-up resentment and issues that just came to a boiling point in the head there. So, the ladies decide to table it while they go outside. And they have a shaman set up to, I guess, cleanse them or bring type of impure spirits. And I feel like I wanted to tell him to do a double dose on freaking Giselle. She was saying, come on, cleanse me. I need it. And I was like, baby, you sure do. You need a whole lot, baby. You need to call up that ex-husband of yours, have him lay hands, get everybody in the church or congregation to intercede and pray for you, baby. Because you, you got a lot of stuff you need to get rid of. Because it's a lot of dirt and darkness filled up in there, okay? So they do all that, and the ladies go back to their rooms in the hotel to clean and freshen up for dinner later on that night. Um... And apparently, somewhere in between them time, me and um, Jacqueline then got a real buddy-buddy with Candace because they come and arrive together at the thing. No, no, Candace, 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 um, I feel like she defends herself pretty good and, you know, she has her mouth, but she really gives me that she wants to be liked and be in. I'm just not understanding why she just felt to the need to get so chummy-chummy with Jacqueline. I don't know. Anyway, so we get um everybody's down to the dinner, and of course, Giselle has to be ghost produced, and she just wants to have this conversation come up between Karen and Sharice, and we get it. Um, they discuss how Sharice posted the whole little video in their group chat of where Karen boobies got exposed, and um. You know, Karen's whole thing is, um, Sharice, you've been following me around, wanting me have, wanting to have a, keep getting freaking phone calls and texts. You've been wanting to have this conversation, conversation with me so bad, you know, a reaction. This could have been a good time for us to have a little private kiki and kind of get us back to old times, like, but instead you chose to blast that into the group to like really, um, try to embarrass me and all that. And, um, Sharice, you know, her little boring voice, Sharice's voice says, you know, her intent wasn't to embarrass Karen, you know, she knew it probably, she wouldn't like it, but, you know, she wasn't in her intent to be mean or catty about it. And, you know, um, Giselle, 
since she's the one to get all this stuff, she asked her two cents in. And it's like, you know, I really want to get us back to old times. You know how it used to be. But apparently, um, according to Sharice in her interview with Carlos King and his podcast, she was saying that um, she didn't really know Karen like that. And that um, she would hear talk a lot around town in the Potomac streets, I guess, about a uh, old drunk black lady and apparently they was talking about karen but she never knew who they would be talking about but it's about karen yeah so apparently the, the talk was that karen was used to get drunk and apparently used to have a little side piece you know on her husband ray so yeah i don't know how they went left if karen was saying something about um Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, Sharice not being there for her. And Sharice was saying, well, you know, I was going through my divorce. Oh, yes. Karen was saying, well, you haven't been around for these five years. And all of a sudden, you want to pop back up. And Sharice was saying, um, you wasn't there for me when I was going through my divorce. And Karen was saying, well, you know, I was going through the issues with my parents both dying recent, um, like around the same time. Her mother had passed away at the same time when Sharice was going through the divorce. Y'all, this is all new to me because I'm one of those people who y'all might say is like a fake fan of the show because I didn't start watching this until um, this franchise Potomac until season five, like when the fight happened. That's legit when I started watching it because I just wanted to mess, see the mess and the tea of what was going on. I still to this day have not seen a single episode before that brawl, fight, whatever y'all want to call it a fight. As opposed to like, you know, Atlanta housewives i've seen that from like the very first season at the time of the year when i was in like middle school so yeah but y'all yeah, this is all new to me so um, i don't know i don't know so i'll just say that but it was right once um uh, karen says that what giselle saying but uh giselle interjects and says but you know she showed up to your mom's funeral and she she um, Sharice was like, yeah, you know, I showed up to your mom's funeral, you know, I was there. And that just sets, um, Karen's off, Karen off. She was like, um, what, I had to go back and replay because I really was not understanding where Karen was saying, um, you will not talk about my mother. And I was confused because Sharice didn't say anything about her mom, but I rewatched it and what happened was, Karen stated that sh their only reason that Sharice came to the funeral was to use it as an end to get back into the group. And then when she says the group, she means like the cast group. And that I guess saying that Sharice didn't do it from the heart. Probably because Sharice was the one that was perpetuating and pushing the rumor that Karen was sleeping around on Ray. So, you know, there was a resentment there from that. And, um... But when she was saying that, what you will not do is use my mother as an end back into this group. So I was confused. I did I um didn't catch that at my first initial watch, but rewatching it, y'all again, like I was saying, I was living for the reactions from freaking Ashley and Wendy over there. That was like, oh, oh. And then did y'all see when um Karen stood up when he had put her arm back and then um Karen said something like I will whoop your ass at this table or something like that. And when he was like trying to hold her back and then started laughing when um, Karen said that. I guess they both, um, just you got a lot of nerves because you were trying to, you tried to put that age shaming card at the last reunion or the reunion before that. But then this whole situation between them was going on and you called it a geriatric fight. Like, girl, you ain't too far from it. Especially up in the neck area and the face and the wrinkles, like, he needs to calm down with using that dairy after work, okay? But, um, that's how the episode ends. It ends on a cliffhanger, and we're just going to have to pick back up on the next episode. I'm hoping they have some fun and some good times, and yeah. That was it, you guys, for Potomac, this episode. Um, um If you enjoyed this, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Comment, tell me your thoughts, and, um subscribe and um yeah see you guys in my next review